like to call the meeting of the Plymouth Board of Education for February 8th, 2023 to order at 7.04 p.m. Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number two on the agenda. I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Do I have that motion? So moved. By Mr. Foote. Do I have a second? Okay. Mr. Showers. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number three on the agenda approval of minutes. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the following minutes. First one, the special meeting of the Plymouth Board of Educated, Education dated January 11th, 2023. Do I have that motion? So moved. By Mr. Second. Showers, do I have a second? By Mr. Foote, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mrs. Lucian abstains. Next one, regular meeting of the Plymouth Board of Education on January 11th, 2023. Do I have that motion? So moved. Mr. Showers, do I have a second? Mr. Foote, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mrs. Lucian abstains. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Item number four on the agenda, public comment. Is there any public comment? Seeing none. We'll move along to item number five on the agenda, student representatives. We'll start with Robert. Um, hello, your contact kind of sports again. Hello. Um, boys and girls basketball, uh, their season is well underway. Um, the boys play today and are still playing Whitney Tech. Um, and then next Friday at the 10th, we have the boys and girls away game at Thomaston. Um, wrestling had their last meet before states last Saturday the 4th. And indoor track ended, and they had their last meet the the sixth. And that's all. Thank you. I just saw the JV one by one point. Yeah. Emily. So recently in the school, the Career Center went on a field trip to Naugatuck Valley Community College on January twenty fourth, and tomorrow they are going on a field trip to the University of New Haven. And the drama club is having a cabaret, their stupid Cupid cabaret, they call it, Friday, February 10th in the auditorium. And it is free. And just in case it snows, the date, the snow date is February 17th. And we also had an assembly last Wednesday where mm -hmm. a, motiv a motivational speaker, um, Jesse Green, came in and just talked a little bit about his life and how he like got his dream to get going. And it was a big success, and a lot of kids really liked it. Awesome. Anna? Hi, I'll be talking about what the senior class is doing. So currently, many of us are finalizing our college um, applications, as well as some of us have received college decisions. We've also uh, started up our prom committee, which we had our past meeting this past Monday. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend, but I've heard that we've started to come up with a few ideas and themes. Great. Anything for our student reps from the board? All right, thank you. If you have somewhere to be, Heather, you're welcome to stay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. See you next month. Item number six on the agenda a presentation um, by Mid Year Energy Update by Ms. Mr. Sanshaw. No, no sir. Okay, um, first of all, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak and, and share a significant um, event that's happening for this, for this Board of Education in the town of Plymouth. Um, but it's a milestone that we should all be very, very proud of. We've all, the next slide here, we've all seen this here, what our mission was is to change our, uh, our use of energy from 
unintentional to intentional conservation. And our goal was to achieve a 25% savings. And we didn't come up with this here. Synergistics came up and said, this is what you're going to do. Uh, so we said, okay. So when they when we signed into it, they said, okay, we've got to find out um, how you operate, what you, what your school, how you're operating the schools, how you're using the schools, what your equipment looks like. And we also have to take and put together what a base year and what the costs were in, in the base year. And our, we picked 2008 because that was the year before we started the program. We started in 2009, so we took 2008 as our base year, and we got all our costs together. And you can see that our costs <clears throat> were over over two and a half million kilowatt hours, uh, 19 cents a kilowatt hour. I'm not going to read this slide for you. You can read it. The bottom line is is the important number. It's $967,581 we paid in 2008 for our energy costs. Um, so when Senator Justice had, had this information, how we're using our buildings and uh, what our equipment looked like and what our costs were, they put together a, a plan for it. And it. It looks like it's a pretty simple plan. It's a pyramid, and it, it's based on energy conservation, efficiency, and then renewable energy. And the basis uh, is energy conservation. That's that's what their their mainstay is. That, that's what they want us to focus on. And if we can do something to become more efficient and get some renewable energy, all the better. But they want us to concentrate on energy conservation, and they helped us put a Put a plan together. Look, so our building blocks are energy conservation, and there's two items on it. And they sound very simple, but they're a little more complicated because we put personalities into uh, into play on this here, and the way people perceive that we should do things. So uh, the the two of them are when you're not using something, turn it off. It's, it's very simple. If you're, you walk out of a building, turn off the lights. Uh, if you're going home for the day, make sure the heat is turned down. Sounds easy, but there's always an opinion why we shouldn't do it or we can't do it. And then the other one is, if you go back to your uh, general science, is a heat transfer. Heat likes to go to cold. It's that, and if that sounds really simple that we can do something with that. So if we can keep our buildings equal to the same temperature outside. There's no heat, no heat loss. We, everything, everything stays the same. And pretty, pretty simple, but it's very, very complicated. Again, personalities come into into play with it. But if we can keep our buildings a little bit cooler in the winter time, you know, or a little, yeah, a little bit cooler in the winter time, and a little bit warmer in the summertime, we can save some money. So this is what we based our our plan on. Is the, this here? Uh, base the, the energy conservation. Been, been working at it for about 13 years. Along the way, we were able to take and uh, and get some uh, grants from. Uh, it was Connecticut Light and Power at that time and Yankee Gas, where we were able to go from T12s to T8s, and now we're in the LEDs. With Matt Matt worked on getting LEDs. LED lights are in the buildings now. And outside, and they they save a significant amount of money. We have an inventory of bulbs that we can probably sell to another school that has a T8 or a T12. But we don't we don't have to change the bulbs. We're going to last. We're going to last our lifetime. Uh, we put in dual source burn, burners at uh, Fisher Elementary, and uh, there was a dual source burner at Eli, but it was old and it needed to be upgraded. We put those in. That was around 2012 when Yankee Gas was promoting the use of natural gas. Uh, so we got some incentives from them to do that. We also, because we didn't have natural gas at Eli or at uh, Fisher, we went back to Yankee Gas and said, we're putting in a dual source burner. We want to take and burn natural gas. Can you take and give us a gas line? Because we don't have a gas line up there. And they said, oh, by all means. So they put in a they put in a gas line for us. So now we're able to burn natural gas in, in all of our buildings. All, all the buildings have 
have dual source burners. And actually, when it gets really bitter cold, if it's going to be bitter cold for an extended period of time, we probably want to burn oil because you get more BTUs out of oil than you do natural gas. But we haven't had to do that in a couple of years. Even with the cold weather we had this last weekend, we were able to keep the buildings up pretty much. So we took advantage of uh, grants and incentives. Uh, and then Foz Energy came along and said, geez, you have about eight acres of property next to your, your building. We would like to entertain putting in a solar array for your high school. And we can take and put in some solar arrays on your uh, elementary and your middle school. And that, that's a, what's called a purchase power agreement. We would have to take and purchase power for, from them for a period of time. They, while they maintain the, they put in the uh, the arrays and they would maintain them for us. But that that took a lot, an awful lot of work, it, it, on town on the board of education's part and the town's part because we had no regulations for solar arrays in town at all. We had to purchase the property. We had to get all the regulations written up. Uh, but we were successful and. In, 2015, they started putting them in. In 2016, we turned the power on uh, on our solar arrays. So um, now we we've kind of completed our uh, our pyramid there of energy conservation and efficiency and and doing some <coughs> excuse me renewable energy work. Uh, Want to come and see what we did in 2000. 22 compared to where we were in 2008. And uh, our, new, our electric use with con conservation is down about a million kilowatt hours per year. Our cost is actually a couple of cents less uh, than it was in 2008. Our, gal our gallons of oil is down about 50%. You'll notice that the therms are up a little bit more because we're burning more natural gas uh, for uh, our changes. So the, uh, as I said before, we changed over to natural gas in 2012 when the uh, Yankee Gas had, had an initiative to go and have every burn, everybody burn gas. And then just recently, uh, we changed over our, our supplier for natural gas uh, and it went down from a uh, dollar fifteen per therm, a dollar fifty one per therm, down to ninety one cents. Uh, so that's going to be a significant uh, change, change in that. So when you put all that together, our expected costs for between August of two thousand nine when we started the program and last December. Was nine million eight hundred eighteen thousand seven hundred eighty dollars. That's what if we had done nothing, that's what our costs would have been. Our actual costs were six million seven hundred ninety nine dollars and eight eighty two dollars. So there was a significant savings and congratulations to to this board and to the town of Plymouth. We have a three million dollar savings over the last thirteen years. It's about uh, thirty point eight percent. We've reduced our BTUs by one hundred and thirteen million, and there's four hundred uh, four four thousand nine hundred two metric tons of CO two that haven't gone into into the environment. So, my hats off to this board for allowing us to, to do, do this here. And I invited the press tonight. Uh, they have a copy of this here presentation. They said that they would put something into the paper if they couldn't be here. He, um, he did ask me to, uh, to comment on the, on the budget itself. And I, I said, no, I'm going to let the superintendent comment on the budget. But I, I would comment on the, uh, on the energy program. And it's not so much important what we're what we're paying for energy it's what we don't have to pay for you know, we're, we don't have why pay for something we don't need and every dollar we can save 
on energy conservation is another dollar that we can put towards our kids. Thank you. Any questions? Any comments? Well, I had talked to Marty earlier, <coughs> and if memory serves me right, when we first started the program, there was a 20 year plan to save approximately 2.2 million. And now we've only been here 13 years in the program, and we're 3 million. And that, and that speaks well for everybody here, especially for you, Marty. You're the guy that walks through these buildings and makes sure these lights are out, make sure everything's working right. But so the I problem, just want to congratulate you. No, thank, and thank, thank you, you for, for what you're doing. Thank you, but but it's it's the people that, that uh, respond to me when they say, Marty, okay, we, we're gonna try this here. Yeah. And we tell them, well, this is we did this here and this is what we accomplished. Yeah. You know, so it, it's not this here is this here is an example of what can be accomplished when a group of people work together for a common cause. You can do anything. You can you can move mountains as long as you're all stay focused on one goal. Yes, but I'm going to also step in with a comment if the board chair allows me to. Sure. Thank you. Um, you're correct with the right leader, Marty, and you were the right leader to do that work. And I have to tell you, coming back to district, you've gotten very soft because it's warmer <laughs> in our buildings than it was when I left. And it's lighter in our buildings than I was. I remember the basketball hallway here and complaining like, I can't even see my own hands in front of me. You've taken out too many light bulbs. Um, but I wanna say about Marty as well, and I'm gonna, I guess before Cheryl allowed me to, um, it's much more than just this though, Marty, what you've done in your commitment to our district. Marty, most of us don't know, uh, walks the buildings when we're sleeping, um, either on the weekends or before school or way after school. And on Saturday, Marty actually caught a frozen, uh, we had some problems with some of our, our burners this weekend because of the cold. And Marty was the one that caught it. And we were lucky that Marty did because a pipe did burst in one of our chillers. And if it wasn't for Marty, that basketball game going on in our gym wouldn't be happening right now because our gym floor would have been ruined. Mm -hmm. And we do have damage, don't get me wrong, but it's significantly less because of what Marty's done. And also, I want you to know, I walk the buildings and I see Marty and he's making connections with kids at this high school that are priceless. I've worked with Marty on initiatives with the Lions Club. He is the liaison that made so many things happen for us. And, and so how he's advocated for our school district and the work he's done here, um, the asset you are to our school district, it's just unbelievable. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. And the reason why everything's so much brighter is because Matt initiative to put in LED lights. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very, very much. And it's, it, it's just a tribute to, to our whole organization on what we've accomplished. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item number seven on the agenda will be the superintendent's update. At this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Superintendent Mr. Falcon. Good evening, everyone. Um, this Friday, our high school will be hosting the National Honor Society induction ceremony. I'd like to extend my congratulations to the 16 juniors, seniors, and their parents who will be inducted into this very elite group on Friday. Uh, in front of you, you have a bright orange brochure for Rolling Roos, and Ms. Noel is going to cover exactly what Rolling Roos are. Good evening. Uh, this is the latest business venture of our transition program. It's a, um, a rolling ruse and it's a coffee and snack cart that's available to the high school staff and the central office staff every Tuesday and Friday. Um, we order ahead of time and then it's delivered to either the classroom or office that you indicate you'd like it to be delivered to. Um, the students serve the coffee and the tea, they prep it for you um, and deliver it with the help of the paraprofessionals uh, in the classroom. And it's very nice. It's been very, very well received. Only up a couple weeks, only running a couple weeks. Um, but I've taken advantage of it myself a couple times. And it's very nice to come into your um, office and there's a nice warm cup of coffee for you. So 
Um, I can't say enough about Tammy Card, our transition teacher, and the paraprofessionals that work with her. They are phenomenal and have had made this happen and given the students another opportunity to really apply these life skills that are important for them within their school day um, and provide a service that's, you know, a nice perk to have at the high school and central office. So, and that brochure was designed all by students in the transition program. They designed the um, paw print for the um, Barkaroos as well, which are advertised on the back, but they still are doing those as well. Um, so hopefully it will be a good business venture for them to have. Very creative. Makes me want to work here. Uh, um, at our budget workshop last Thursday night, the Board of Education officially adopted the recommended budget of $26,149,100, which is a 4.3% increase over our current operating budget. As a reminder to the board, our next steps are um, by February 15th for Matt and I to submit that adopted budget to the Board of Finance for their review. And then we are scheduled to present the budget to the Board of Finance on March 20th. And finally, this past week, I was informed that two of our teachers with the most seniority in the district I've put in for their retirement. I'd like to thank Corinne Johnson, a special education teacher at Eli Terry Junior Middle School. And I would like to thank Gina Ritchie, an art teacher from Terryville High School, for their combined 78 years of service to the Plymouth Public Schools. Uh, they'll both be missed by their colleagues, students, and our school community. That's all I have. Correct. Any comments or questions for Mr. Right. Moving along. Um, item number eight unfinished business. Uh, the committees. Uh, we have the finance committee it is intact, correct? Then we have the um, negotiation uh, committee for the nurses' so slide. And then um, I'm sure this pairs you know, working on that and with the dates and those things. And we have the safety committee um, that was always intact, uh, but we do need to talk about the policy, um, the board, what avenue you wanted to take with that. Do we want to keep it as is and me as a full board? Um, our, you know, our policies were just rewritten um, by our attorney, Shipman Goon. Um, do we want to keep it as is and the whole board hears the policies and gets presented and then we vote on them collectively? Um, or do we want to form a subcommittee to look at that to bring them to the board? I'd like to hear some thoughts. Anyway. So you have to work with the whole board. Why don't we just keep it that way? Yeah. Kelly, you agree? Uh, yeah. Okay. Mr. Foote? I think the whole board. Okay. This is what I agree. Okay, Mr. Perugino? Sure. Yes. All right. Sydney? Yes. Yeah. Fine. All right. Okay. So we'll keep it as is for now. Um, in the curriculum, we'll talk about uh, outside of the meeting. Item number nine on the agenda new business. Uh, we have an out state, out of state field trip. So I'd like to entertain a motion to approve an out of state field trip to Washington, D.C. from November 15th, 2023 to Friday, November 17th, 2023, for an estimated five to 10 students in grades nine through 12 at Terrible High School in the Social Studies Department. Do I have that motion? So moved. Mr. Showers, I have a second. Thank you. By Mr. Zabushka. Any discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. <laughs> Like to entertain a motion to change the date of the regular Board of Education meeting from March 8th, 2023, to a special Board of Education meeting to be held on March 15th, 2023. Do I have that motion? So moved. By Mr. Foote. Do I have a second on that motion? Why are we changing the date? I need a second on the motion first, Ms. Perry. Okay. Second. Second by Ms. Perry. All right. Discussion on the motion. Yeah. Uh, why are we changing the date? Uh, it was a request from uh, some of the board members and the staff for personal okay. matters. Okay. Any other discussion? <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. All right. 
Item number 10 on the agenda, board member and committee reports. Finance and operations. At this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Mr. Tenz, the business manager. So you all have the, uh, the packet that I prepared for this month. Um, I don't really have anything additional to comment on other than entertain questions should you have them. Um, and if not, I'll just turn to Mr. Paragino and say, what page would you like me to turn to on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Tenza, let me tell you, uh -oh. I went through the whole thing again, and there's nothing we can do about the deputies. It's out of our hands. Um, you're and, and again, the, the deficits on the lines themselves show, but they will, I'll be able to yeah. To rectify those as the year goes on, and we receive, you know, we receive our grant money from the state. That will start to go in there. We should get the first excess cost grant payment uh, at the end of this month. And once that's deposited, you will see that that deficit is going to close the gap. And um, it's right around now that I begin to do the minor transfers within lines to to chew those up, uh, mostly between supplies and that that work. So. Uh, I'm still confident we're going to end the year just fine. Well, um, it's going to be tight. But it's going to be a little tighter than what, what we're using. Right. But, but that's okay. Yeah. The, uh, the only question I have is, is we'll be getting money for the uh, Mackey School Transportation, correct? We've already received one payment, we'll receive one. and we will receive an additional payment in May. Um, and I can tell you that it will be $50,050. And $50. So, oh, yeah, cheap. And we still have 1.9 million left to work with. Correct. That's all I have, Matt. You're doing a great job. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Anything else for Mr. Tunzi? No, sir. Thank you. All right. Personnel report is attached. Um, item number 11, public comment. Any public comment? Right. Seeing none, we'll move to item number 12 on the agenda, Board of Liaison Reports. We'll start with Mr. Perugino, Perry S. Fisher Elementary School. I didn't make the meeting this month because of another obligation. Mr. Zabushka. Yes, sir. Um, there was no PTA this so far this month. It'll be next week, Tuesday, because of the way it falls, the second Tuesday of the month. But um, there are superstar readers where classrooms are competing for the most minutes of reading during each week. A prep, pep rally for reading was held as a kickoff event. Uh, bucket filler students are were congratulated for their hard work of being kind, showing respect, and having empathy toward others. That's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Abushka. This is Condreo Florenciani, Eli Terry Junior Middle School and the Booster Club. For the middle school, their next PTA meeting is on February 15th. It's going to be online. Um, the link will be posted. They're having a craft fair on April 1st from 10 to 3. On March 10th, um, they're having a paint night from 6 to 8. It's $25 a person. Um, they are doing the calendar raffle again in April, and they're looking for more calendar donations. The average value of the item is $25, um, if anybody wants to contribute towards that. For the Booster Club, I just heard that the girls made the Virtual League, and that we're going to be hosting it, right? That's what it was. I don't believe the girls made the Virtual League, I believe we're hosting the Virtual League. Oh, we're hosting it? Yes. I don't believe we made it. But we're hosting it. Okay. So it'll be three games that we're going to be hosting. I believe so. Okay. They'll be selling <laughs> I, concessions. I don't think we're playing. I think we're hosting. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're still gearing up for sports awards. So please send in your pictures, um, scholarships um, for the high school seniors. Make sure you fill out the forms when it's time. They plan on having the IG round up in the spring, a car wash in May. And that's about it. Okay. Thank you. This is Cross of Terrible High School in that event. Yes, the Terrible High School PTSA met um, last month. They meet again next week. Uh, if anyone is interested in um, checking them out, they meet um, a week from today, so next Wednesday at 7 p.m., right here in the cafeteria. 
Uh, they are continuing fundraising for the aftergrad party. We sent out um, we did a bunch of stamping and dressing of envelopes and mail mailing those out to local and surrounding area businesses looking for donations for our seniors for a safe grad night for them. Um, coming up, we have a designer bag bingo on March 31st. So if anybody's interested in a designer bag, they uh, can, they're we're happy to have you join us. So shut up your alley. It's March 31st. What's a designer bag? Like a purse. Oh, I'm not interested. No, you're not interested. <laughs> you don't want to get one for your wife? <laughs> Never know. He needs us out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll play bingo. I hope I don't win. And there will be other fundraisers coming up for PTSA that you probably would be able to. Flower sale for Mother's Day. You should be on that one. Um, lots of things that are coming up that anybody could help out the grad <laughs> committee. Um, as far as Ed Advance is concerned, we had a meeting on uh, February 2nd. Um, it was a Zoom meeting. Very quick. It was about, I don't think it was an hour. Uh, we had a couple of representatives from Ed Advance come on to talk about their individual departments for anybody who is new to kind of give them an idea of what Ed Advance does. Um, anyone who's not familiar with Ed Advance and how arrest works, it's really quite an interesting process. And if you ever um, want to learn more about it, you can talk to me or you can even join us for a meeting. It used to be great back in the day because they would have oh, dinner <laughs> dinner served right. by their their own chefs there, and it was wonderful. But the Zoom meetings are okay too, I guess. <laughs> That's it. All right, thank you so much. All right, item number thirteen on the agenda: board comments. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Showers. I just like to say, Marty, thank you for all the work you've done. It's really impressive. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm also impressed by the energy. I live nearby and I always wondered how well those um, electrical panels do. It's quite impressive. So thank you for your commitment. Mr. Foote. Thank you, Marty. All right. Yes. I also want to thank Marty for all your hard work. And I also want to um, congratulate our retiring teachers. Um, specifically, Mrs. Ritchie, um, she was uh, instrumental in my daughter making the transition to Terryville High School. She took a class with her early on and traveled to Italy with her as well. And it was a, you know, it was a nice, nice to have somebody around for that time to kind of help her along. So, yeah, congratulations to them. It's kind of points, yeah. I remember when I was. Maybe like four or five years ago, I would always hear that you would leave post-it notes for teachers. <laughs> do you still do that? If somebody left on their light. <laughs> so if Brian thinks that you need to be a little bit more strict, those post-it notes, those are kind of like <laughs> nice little reminders. Because <laughs> I used to hear about those a lot. <laughs> and uh, Mrs. Johnson worked with Jill, my daughter, a lot while she was in middle school. And um, especially through the COVID years, she just stayed right on top of my daughter. <laughs> So it's gonna. It, she deserves to retire. She's been around for a while. So, and then um, Jen, I worked with her, with her at the PTA in Plymouth Center, and her son passed away, and that was pretty sad. So, our condolences to her and her family. Mr. Perugino. No, I like to thank Marty. I know. I know the work that's going into that, and uh, I remember when we put this program together 13 years ago. And it was a struggle. We had to buy the land. We had to go to the town. We had to set up all kinds of stuff. And Marty was very instrumental in that, helping us out. And uh, I really appreciated that. And it's showing, it's showing right here. And also, congratulations to the two retirees. 70 something years, you said? Uh, 78 years of service combined. Wow. Yeah. That's so Between fun. the two of them. Between yep. the two of them. Oh, my Lord. Thank God. In Plymouth, too. That's In Plymouth, that's yeah. That's well, they've seen it all, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. This is a bush call. Um, I've known Marty for quite a while, and I remember him teaching at Fisher when I was there helping Paul Swanka. And I knew right away that when he should, took this job, the energy conservation job, that he'd be a stickler on shutting lights off and things like that. And he really is the best person for the job. It really is. Thanks, Marty. Well, 
Thank you, Mr. Sanshaw. As I said before, um, I, you know, also have known you pretty much my whole life. Um, so I know how disciplined and dedicated you are to multiple things. So, you know, the proof is in the pudding. All right. The next regular meeting of the Plymouth Board of Education has been changed to a special Board of Education meeting to be held on Wednesday, March 15th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the cafeteria of Ontario High School. Item number 15 on the agenda. I'd like to entertain a motion to enter into executive session at 7.39 p.m. for the following. For the purpose of final discussion of the contractual agreement with Twin Lakes Consulting, and for the purpose of setting the date for negotiations for the nurse's contract, inviting in Mr. Falcone, Superintendent, and Mr. Tenz of Business Manager. Do I have that motion? So moved. Second. Seconded by Mr. Zabushka. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right.